All right, share and welcome back to some more Magic Jewels. Uh, quick update before we get into the game. You may notice from my tone of voice that I'm not feeling very well. Um, I've got some sort of horrible sore throat and I've picked it up from my dad who's currently having a coughing fit. So I'm not quite there yet, but I can feel myself getting there. So before that happens, I need to backlog as much as possible. Fortunately for you guys, Don't Starve and Dishonored have been backlogged already, so they are going to finish accordingly um, without any effort from me, because it's already been done. Un unfortunately though, Beholder, uh, I've got no videos in the backlog for that at the moment, and considering it's doing silly voices and I've got a really horrible sore throat, uh, it's going to go on hiatus. Um, I'm not sure if it'll come back. But uh, for now, I'm not going to be recording anything of it because I just imagine it'll just make my voice so much worse. But I will be able to get these magic videos done. That is something that will be recorded. Um, they might be backlogged though, so if you do have any suggestions for uh, new cards and stuff like that, I might not have, um, might not be able to change up the deck or anything like that, just because I will have already recorded it essentially. But as always. This video is sponsored by Five Color Combo, so if you check the description you'll find a link to their website where you can find some really cool Magic the Gathering tokens made by real Magic the Gathering artists, so if that's something that interests you, then be sure to check it out. Alright guys, I'll see you in the games. Okay, we're in. We're on the draw. Uh, we have turn 2 Jace and turn 2 t Telling Time, counters, board wipes and an endgame card, so... I think this is good enough. Our opponent is rank 40 called Master AJ, playing some sort of aggressive deck. Wonderful. Well, hopefully we hit our land drops on time and we can just languish away all of his stuff. That would make me so happy. But, one damage for him. One card underneath the Bomat Courier. If you were curious and didn't know, you can discard your entire hand and take all the cards that are under Bomat Courier. Instead, right, well, we're just gonna go Shambly Invent because we have no turn one play and no black mana that comes into play untapped as well. So, should we get a Grasp of Darkness next turn and want to use it? There's a Smuggler's Copter. There's an excuse to use a Grasp of Darkness if we draw into what we need, but that's at least two turns away. We either draw the Grasp. And don't have the land, or draw the land, so that we can cast the grasp. But, we've got telling times and jaces and all that shenanigans. There's your grasp, so we just need a black land. Jace or telling time here. I guess Jace um, stops him from attacking him with his Bowmat Courier. He looks like he's trying to get empty handed and take all the cards underneath it, so it'll slow him down that way. He will instead use the Smuggler's Copter though, so we're not going to actually negate any damage. In fact, we're probably going to encourage more damage, but the looting on our part is going to help. Helps us find that black source, and we can still tell in time next turn as well. So what you got? More red. It's like mono red deck wins. What the hell? You're rank... F I have not seen a rank 40 using this card. Each player may scry kind of need that. Yeah, let's go. So he's helping us get to our languish quicker. Which is why I never really understood it. But, what can you do? Right, he's probably going to attack him with both here because we're not presenting any power. Question is, do I want to attack, uh, block the Bomat Courier? Because if that one mana is a Titan Strength or, or a Built to Smash, we're going to lose our Jace. So I think I'd rather just not take the risk and just take an extra one damage. Yeah, he looks like he has something then. He did a little fake pause at the very least. Maybe he assumed I'd blocked. But I didn't, damn it. I didn't. Alright, Shambling Vents means that we can languish next turn. And we're just going to pass the turn, I think. He has burn, then I take it. He's pausing again. He really likes pausing. Well, we're just going to Jace at the last moment anyway. 
How many cards do you got under here? Oops. Three. He's going to have four, so he can pretty much just recycle his entire hand if he wants to this turn. Looming Spires gives a creature plus one, plus one, and first strike. Yeah, Bowmat Courier is the one who receives such treatment. And yeah, getting in with Eager Construct to crew up. We're taking five here. And a Lath New Hellion that he can keep for a turn. Fair play. It's going to cost him a little bit, but we're going to allow it. Uh, taking nine. Next turn we can get rid of one and we can also wipe his board as well. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to flip Jace in this time, so I might as well just block. And negate some of the damage, because I'm going to have to languish in this situation. So, block, loot. We're going to lose our Jace, but we would have lost him anyway. And we get some counter spells. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's, uh, we need that land, don't we? We do. Uh, I kind of really need all of this. I'll uh, get rid of a counter spell, I suppose. And then we're going to Telling Time. Oh, we get the land that we should have discarded. Yeah. Shameful. Well, we get at least to get a broken concentration right back. So, it's not too bad. So we're taking five here. We're going to languish away the board. He's down to two cards. He's tapped out, so he can't take the Bowmat Courier's cards anymore. Which gives us card advantage. And is he going to pay the two energy to keep it alive? He is. Alright. Well, he's going to lose it. He gets to keep his um, smuggled copter around, though. That's the only problem. And a Grasp of Darkness will get it at a later date. But for now, languish. Can't allow him to untap with the uh, Bomat Courier and refill his hand, which would actually net him some cards, most likely. So he needs a creature in order to get in for three here. He's got a land and a Blood Mist. At the beginning of combat, I believe something gets Double Strike. Yes. So a creature can have bl Double Strike. Fortunately for us, we have Removal and Counters... For days, so it's not really an issue for us. We also have Archangel Avicent as well to block. Even through the double strike, she'll still get that damage in. So depending on what he plays here, looks like he's just going to pass. Yeah, okay. That's fine with us. I'm not. I'm going to use Archangel Avicent against him. And this way we just keep getting lands... Holding up counters, doing absolutely nothing but helping. In fact, could we have... Uh, yeah, we could have done... Maybe. Maybe held up Grasp of Darkness there, but we can do it next turn. I was thinking about getting them with the Shambling Vent. I'm expecting he's got Burn, though. That's the only thing. Which is why I didn't do it last turn. Plus, the fact... The only reason I didn't do it last turn is essentially I wouldn't be able to... Even if it died, I was assuming I wouldn't be able to hold up Grasp of Darkness. But now I can. Because now I can go black, white, and blue. And then we've got Counterspell Magic open and Double Black open at the same time. Hang on. Yes. Yes, that's fine. Get in for some lifelink here. Get us out of the way of that aggression. And he doesn't have burn. Or at least he doesn't have burn that he cares about a shambling vent with. And that just doesn't sound right. <laughs> Essentially. There's a renegade freighter. Okay, that's a 5-4, uh, is it? A oh, 4-3 that can get plus 1, plus 1 and trample. Okay. Still needs a creature before he can crew any of these, though. So the longer he waits... How much mana would he have up here? 
three, four, five. We'd have counter spell magic open here. Yes, yes. Let's do it. We got counters open. We got grasp of darkness open. So he isn't playing a creature next turn. We get to draw and lose life. Loss of life sucks a little bit, but we're not exactly in a uh, burn range situation that we have to be worried about. And I just have to keep on stopping him from having creatures. Creatures like that guy. And we're going to counter it. Because if I let it resolve, then he can just crew in response and probably kill off Obnixilus. But now we're untapped, we can have Archangel Avacyn up as well. So, Prairie Stream. Obnixilus ticks up. We get a murder. And I think we can probably afford to get in with a Shambling Vent here. I don't think anything's changed since the last time. Especially since we have a lot more mana. To do what we want. We can't hold up Avizen, but we can hold up Broken Concentration and two different removal spells based on the creature he plays. So if he was to play a creature and crew one of these vehicles, then I can just Grasp of Darkness one before it even gets any sort of benefit. So the double strike absolutely does nothing uh, to stop our removal spells doing their thing. What's the ultimate at? Eight. Alright, two more turns and we can have Obnixilus and an ultimated emblem. So I think this game's just over at this point. Because we can definitely hold him off for that amount of time. We could even Tragic Arrogance and leave him with one vehicle, but there's really not much point, to be honest. It's literally five mana get rid of an artifact. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to keep ticking up. And more counter spells just seals the deal, really. Let's go Shambling Vent again. We're in absolutely no rush. Because next turn, we're just going to maybe ultimate Obnixilus based on what he does. Or even just tick up and continue to fill our hand with removal. And all sorts of lovely things. I feel like we could have held up Avacyn there. But the game tapped it for me, so I'm not too bothered. And he passes. Alright, well we're just going to tick up Obnixilus. Next turn we get to ultimate and keep him. And we get a Sorin. Alright. If it wasn't over, it's over now. And yes. Yes, we'll absolutely do that. That just speeds up the clock as well. So we're going to be dealing damage equal to the revealed card on top. Which is 2 damage for a Blessed Alliance, so any attacker that comes in is going to die. I expect to see a concession after seeing something like that, because now he's going to need two creatures to get through. And we've just got removal to deal with all of it, so... Yeah. He's sticking through, though. I admire you. Alright. Ultimate of Nixilus. You lose two life every single time a player draws a card. And we're also going to... Plus Sorin. Reveal the top card. It's a land, so he takes no damage. Okay, uh, we've got a handful of all sorts here, so... Should I just Avacyn? Or I could even just Blessed Alliance. Yeah, let's just Blessed Alliance and gain some life. Might as well. It's the end of the game at that point. And... Yeah, let's suit up the Shambling Vent. Do the thing. It's tapping my mana wrong again, and I'm just. <laughs> at this point, I'm not bothered. So, get in for another two. Up to 17. Past the turn, he draws a card, he loses two life. And that's probably about it. Our opponent's major downfall there seems to be not playing around a Languish. Especially since he had a Bomat Courier with more cards under it than he had in his hand as well. He should have probably left open one mana, but who knows. Right, we get to draw a card and lose one life, but he loses two. We get to plus Sorin. If it's four or more converted mana cost, he just loses right here. 
And it is. All right. Wunderbar. All right, guys. I'll see you in the next game. Okay, we're in. Zero lander. Throw it back. One lander. Throw it back. And a two lander. Uh, we're going to have to take it, but I don't like our odds of winning. Blue white for our opponent. I was gonna say from his avatar, he's ranked 38 called or Lou 82. I was gonna say he looked kinda like a green white human based avatar. And some people like to uh, change their avatars based on their deck type, but with blue I'm not so sure. But there is the um River Marshal that is a human that taps with blue open, so this might just be bant humans perhaps. Um that's actually not too bad. Isolate Chapel. It does come into play untapped, uh, tap though. So we're just going to throw out our planes here. Pass the turn. Mimic a uh, Blessed Alliance or something like that. Though he won't be hasting in, so he shouldn't have to concern himself with such things. It's Bant. No doubt about that. I doubt we're going to see any more colours from him. He's just passing though. The longer he passes for us, the better it is. We need to find ourselves some blue mana, but until then, we have three different removal spells we can use on his creatures that are just practically hard-casted removals. And this one's just sacrifice a creature, so... We should be able to take something out as long as he isn't using tokens. Eldrazi Displacer. All right. Uh, before that becomes a problem, I guess I'm just going to grasp it. Essence Flux. Oh, this is Bant Flicker. Oh, hello. Okay. Alright, so we're going to have to use our removal spells very carefully here. Because he can exile them out of place whenever we want. Um, if it is Flicker, then this guy needs to go. Pure and simple. Um, what we could do is just use Blessed Alliance here to force him to sacrifice a creature. An attacking creature, which will mean that he has to flicker it out of combat uh, or use a counter spell. And I think I'm okay with doing that. So let's try that out. And if he is going to play a creature that he wants to flicker, then we can just murder maybe. If he drops his mana. Alright. Target play against 4 life and you sack an attacking creature. At the very least, we gain 4 life. Because of the ordering on the text. Long road home. Yeah, you see, he's just going to use all of his flicker spells here. We're still going to gain four life, but he doesn't have to sacrifice anything. So, we don't miss out. Let's hope for a blue mana here, otherwise we might be in a bit of trouble. Here comes his displacer again. Not blue mana. Instead, we have a double blue card. How annoying. Right. Do we murder this right now? We are using all of our removal on this Displacer, which is a problem. Um, but he's using all of his Flicker on it. So at the same time, as much as we are losing out on our removal, he is also just losing out on his cards. He does have several different Flicker spells open here. He has the Long Road Home, Essence Flux, Disperse, and the new one from Kaladesh. I can't remember. Aerial Maneuver? Something like that. Can't remember. So, chances are he's probably got a flicker spell. So, with that in mind, uh, let's try and murder it again. And, right, we know he's either out of flicker or he doesn't care anymore. Which is good. It's good for us. So, that guy is just a constant flicker spell, which is a problem. Arbach Stomper. So he's uh, essentially a Thrag Tusk. He gains 5 life when it enters the battlefield. That has to die. So can't be having you flicker that. Blue mana. Ah, anguish not making. Uh, while he's tapped out, let's kill it. As soon as we get a single blue source, we're off to the races because Glimmer of Genius is just absolutely awesome are getting the right cards for the situation. Elvish Visionary, so he gets to draw a card. He's on par with his guard advantage now, and now he's down. But he's got Lumbering Falls to get in. Hexproof as well, so our removal spell is... Ooh, lovely. Blue Sauce. So, I'm just going to pass the turn. Hold up, 
Loads of removal, but mostly we're just going to glimmer here. I'm not going to remove a Elvish Visionary. Not for three mana and losing three life anyway. It's just not worth it. Crumbling Vestige. So he gets to choose a colour. He's going red. Verdurous Gearhulk. Hmm. He's splitting the counters. I wish it would tell you how many counters. But it seems like we're not going to know. Um, I guess we just glimmer here. He's getting those counters whether he likes it or not. We can't do anything about that. Sorin. Uh, we're at five mana. We've already got a glimmer, so I'm just going to let it go. <coughs> Gideon, though, is pretty good. All right, so he makes them both, both into three threes. He's got a four four. So he's still in languish range, which is fortunate for us. So that is one thing that I'm going to go hunt down with the next glimmer. And we get another black source. Okay. Well, before we play any of our lands, it's main phase glimmer. Look for that languish. We don't find it. We don't need the lands. We get a telling time and a blessed alliance. So I'm just going to hold up the blessed alliance. Make him get rid of at least one of his creatures. It's probably just a visionary, to be honest, and we're going to take seven. And he's got an ether hub. And part the water veil to take an extra turn. Okay. Well, let's just say essentially an extra attack for him. And we're just going to make you sack a creature so that your next attack only does seven to us. Most likely, anyway, of course. Okay. He gets an untap. Two cards in hand. One of them's a Nissa. He's going to be able to flip that Nissa. But we can anguish to making it, so it's not too much of a worry. The card advantage is, of course, not ideal. But what can you do? You might even go for the token here, actually. No, he's just going to go for plus one. Gets a crumbling vestige, so that gets into play. He uh, gets to choose a color mana. Hopefully that doesn't go to use as much as you'd hope, but he gets his Lumbering Falls, I suppose. Okay. We're taking a lot here. So we need that Languish real soon. Telling Time's going to allow us to look for it, though. So hopefully... Hello. All right. That's nice. Um, so it's going to be, how much money have we got? We've got one, three, six, seven. Hmm. It's not the manner I hope we would have. So I was hoping to be able to Gideon plus Languish, but we're one mana short of that. So it looks like just Languish here. And then, uh, we can't kill this Lumbering Falls, which is why I want the Gideon down to make the tokens. She's going to save us. So, play a land. We're going to languish right now. Question is, do we telling time or anguished on making? Well, we can't anguish on making because we die. So, that's answered our question. Okay. We still only have one blue source, so we still don't have counters that we can hold up at all. But Gideon should hopefully hold off this Lumbering Falls long enough. As long as he doesn't get another one. He's got an Essence Flux. So whichever creature he gets down, he's going to be able to flicker. And it's going to be the Displacer. Okay. Nothing we can do about that. And he's passing his turn. He should have Lumbering Falls there. But sure. It's sure. Um... You don't help in the slightest. So, counter spell. And you do help, because we need the double blue. So we get a counter. We get another blue source. I've just thought he can displace our token away. Which is upsetting. So that means that he's going to be able to get in for six on the Gideon. 
think we're just dead here. No matter what happens. We can anguish the making, but we'll go down to one. He'll flicker, so he'll have six damage on the board. And then we shambling vents, we only gain two, up to three. The three unblocked kills us. I think we're just dead. No matter what we do here. I suppose I could anguish the making encounter, but then we're still just dead. If we had a Blessed Alliance, we'd be fine. We'd have the right amount of mana to hold that up to kill his Lumbering Falls, but we just don't. Um. Hmm. Either way, I don't think Gideon helps. We only have one counter we can hold up. And we have an Anguish to making that he can flicker away. You know what we can do, though? We can, maybe, let me just check my mana, one, white, black, normal, white, black, yep. What we can do is, on his turn, Anguished on making so that when he flickers it, it has summon sickness. And then we can chump with a shambling vent. I think that's the only way around this. So he gets to untap. First thing he plays, we're just going to get rid of his displacer. He gets an ether hub. He gets an extra energy. We're going to kill your thing now. Countering it just means that we go down to one and die. Because we can't hold up the shambling vent anymore. So, if he's got... He's not even attacking him with his lumbering falls again. I find that very odd. Well, I guess our only option here is to Gideon. Get a token out. Pass the turn. We can hold up shambling vents and a counter spell. But Displace is gonna displace away our night ally. Yep, so that's gone. We're still alive here. Uh, short of him flickering away our shambling vent with Long Road Home. Or even Displacer, to be honest. So, yeah, we're essentially just dead. Plus, his uh, Nissa's getting far too close to uh, ultimating. In fact, next turn. Hmm. In comes the shambling vent. If we could activate Shambling Vent twice, we might have been alright, but... Mm. So if he remembers to flicker our Shambling Vent... Oh, he's disconnected. Alright. And a Reflector Mage. Sure. We can't counter that. We need our Shambling Vent open. He has all the colourless sources in the world, so we're just dead. As long as the AI knows what it's doing. And if it doesn't, we might just be able to cheat out a win. <laughs> Let's see, shall we? Activate Shambling Vent. Present a blocker. Flicker? No flicker. Okay. Well, doesn't matter which one we block. Shambling Vent's dying. And so are we likely without planar outburst, perhaps. But we get a land. How do we not die here? I don't think we do. Nissa Ultimates changes all of the lands into 6 6 elementals. Swings in with that. Planar Outburst would have been fine because then we could plus Gideon after the Planar Outburst to kill the Nissa, but then we've got the, sh the Lumbering Falls to kill us on the way around. So that's just it. Let's make a 2 2 ally. See what our opponent does. <laughs> Which way do you want to win? You can displace the Knight to win. You can ultimate your Nissa to win. Yep. That's a shame. Hmm. Yeah, it's very fond memories of playing with the uh, the Flicker deck. I haven't actually played with it since Kaladesh came out, but things like the um, 
card he just played there. I can't remember his blooming name. Uh, really good. When it enters the battlefield, you draw two cards. And there it is. Cloud Blazer. That's the one. So you draw two cards and gain two life. And if you can flicker that over again, then you're, uh, you're a genius. Uh, we can scatter and turn one of our lands into a 4-4 four, four or a 3-3. Three, three. But it just gets flickered away, to be honest. So we're just getting cheeky here. <laughs> There you go, reflect a mage, bounces planes back to our hand. Can't cast planes for the next turn. And six comes in to kill us. Unless he wants to attack our Gideon. Go on, kill our Gideon. Half of him wants to kill the Gideon. Alright, that's fine. Yeah, well. Yeah, I feel like if we'd have got our blue manor a little bit earlier, we would have been able to glimmer into a lot more answers and get those displaces out of the way a lot more but he just had too much flicker to deal with our removal and we just couldn't keep hold of it so yeah that's gonna be the game and the end of the video so if you have enjoyed the video then be sure to leave a like it helps me out a great deal lets me know you're enjoying the series as always if you haven't already then be sure to subscribe for more magic jewels content as well as other stuff and if you're not sure what that is then stay for the end card see the rest of it and i'll see you next time Bye bye